In this video, we're going to look at our CAD data that we've exported out of ArcGIS Pro and bring it into SketchUp for some preliminary modeling. I've opened here the CAD file that I exported, and the first thing I'm going to do is run a command called units. And I can do that by simply typing into my keyboard UNITS, and units will bring up a dialog box showing me that this model, this drawing, thinks of itself in terms of decimal units. So let's let's go a little deeper and query some size of object to understand where we think we are with units. So these are single family residence units, and I'm going to run a command called DIST, which is a shortcut for distance, and this is a measurement command. I'm prompted to specify both the first point and a second point. And it tells me that distance was 19.4852. I'm going to run the command again. I could type it in, or I could right click and repeat distance. And I'm at 12. So this is measured in meters. So my decimal units in CAD is in meters, and that's going to be important when we bring it into other applications. So let's look at, for instance, SketchUp. And I have a, I'm in SketchUp Pro 2021. Let's make a new SketchUp, new from template architectural meters. I'm going to select the scale figure that I get by default with most of my templates and delete. And under file, I'm going to import, go to my CAD data. And then before I click import, I'm going to look at my options. And my units, it looks like it is interpreting them as of now in meters, which is great. I'm not going to change that, but be aware I could reset this. And the reason why I measured in CAD what my units were is I want to be able to anticipate that such that when I bring my data into SketchUp or any other modeler, I know how to scale it properly to, to preserve that data. I am not going to merge coplanar faces or orient faces. It doesn't even matter if I import materials because I have no faces. I only have lines in my CAD file. So this, this, these sections don't really matter. And for now, I'm not going to preserve the origin. Um, coming from a GIS standpoint, it may be that the origin is quite far from my model or my drawing. And by leaving this off, it will recenter it. And the, that's good and bad. It's good in that it's going to bring the data very close to the center of my modeling space in SketchUp, so it will be easier to find and manipulate, but it does lose any possible connection back to the geospatial space of GIS. So we're making it a little bit easier to model, um, but sacrificing potentially some information. And I think in this case, for this demonstration, it's perfectly appropriate. I'm going to say OK and import. I get some results of what was imported. And now in SketchUp, let's take a look at what we have. I can navigate in SketchUp using my middle mouse button. If I click and drag, I am orbiting. And if I scroll wheel, I am zooming in and out. And if I shift middle mouse button, I am panning. And what we may be able to discern is that this CAD data has been abutting, is, is located such that the leftmost point abuts the green axis, which is my Y axis. The, um, my lowest point abuts the red axis, which is my X axis, and my blue axis is my Z axis. If I zoom out, you can see that I have positive X and negative X in dashed, positive y in green, negative y in dash green, positive uh, z in blue, negative z in dash blue. So this is a Cartesian coordinate system that's very, very common when we're making 3D models. And if I click on my CAD data, it is going to select the entirety of that CAD data as one object. I'm going to make sure in SketchUp that I have my default tray visible over here. So I'm not going to hide it, but if it was hidden, I would be able to show it here. And I want to make sure that my components 
is enabled. So I see components as a checkbox here, and that means that it is showing each of these trays are collapsible. And components are logical objects that have been grouped together. What I just selected is a component in SketchUp. And when I open my components, I don't see it here, but that's because I need to click on this little down arrow and read my components that are currently in my model. So I want to see only components that are actively in my model. And it tells me CAD export DWG and my scale figure as well. These are two components. If I look at my entity info for what is selected, the definition is CAD export DWG. So it took the entire data set from CAD, made it one logical object and brought it into SketchUp. And that's, that's really powerful and we need to get a little more deeply into SketchUp to understand why that's useful to us, but it, it's, um, it's a nice way of separating data. In my case, I want to trace some of these outlines and begin to give them some height. So I am going to select and then with a right click, I'm going to access some shortcut commands for this component. I'm going to explode it. And what I get now is, doesn't look any different, but in my entity, I'm seeing 1,657 edges. If I click off of my model, it deselects. If I click onto my model, it now only selects individual edges. And that may be challenging to see. Let's zoom in a little closer. Individual edges. There we go. If I want to extrude some of these objects, and let's remember we're working in meters. So if we know or presume some number of stories for these models, we'll want to be measuring those in meters. The way we're going to extrude these is very specific to CAD data that's imported. And it's a little different than regular native SketchUp geometry. If you're interested in native SketchUp geometry, I have a series of tutorials, I think a playlist on basic or, or foundational SketchUp modeling that you could access that would kind of fill you in on, on some of those methods. In the case of data from CAD, I'm going to select my line tool and I'm going to click from one snap and endpoint to another endpoint, only one line. And what that does is that one line searches out what it was drawn against and looks to see if it's part of a closed circuit of lines. And when it finds that, it shades in. So I could do that for, let's do that for just a few of these, maybe those. These objects now are not sets of lines, but they're actually shaded faces. And I can use this in SketchUp to extrude. The extrude tool is called the push-pull tool. And the way it works is I click in a shaded region and I'm going to pull, oops, let's do that again. Let me select this shaded region because I wanted to do it with one of my single family homes. Click and drag. As I drag up, I'm extruding up. If I drag down, I'm extruding down. If I look in the lower right corner of my interface, I'm seeing the distance of my extrude. This is not tremendously helpful to me because I cannot accurately locate my extrude. I can't stop it at, let's say, two meters. But SketchUp, it's a beautiful workflow, doesn't require me to. Let's just extrude this up far higher than what I think it is, which is one story. I think one story is going to be, let's say, um, maybe we're going to make that three and a half meters but I'm gonna drag this up really high and release. And now I'm gonna type in 3.5, enter, and it corrects the extrusion that I just made. So let's do that again, click and drag up, 3.5, enter. I think these buildings may be two units, so I'm gonna say seven meters. Maybe we'll go eight meters. Click, drag, release, eight. Click, drag, release, eight. Now I have some models that are of a reasonably um, reasonably dimensioned extrusion. This building, I can't recall the, the number of stories, but I believe it's, it's, it's far greater. I'm going to say 12 meters. So I'm going to click and drag 12, enter, and now we have a 12 meter building. 
So this would make relatively short work of turning these lines into boxy extrusions. The lines in this case have not been corrected from their irregular tracing. So I might want to have spent some time in CAD correcting these. But for now, at least I can realize a model that's extruded from these that um, gives me some footprints of the entire base to begin to look at perhaps what viewpoints were at certain locations in space. So that's bringing our CAD data in to SketchUp and exploding the component, tracing one section, and then extruding up to a very specific height.